Hello there, my name is Richard from Silent Peak and welcome to this DxO Photo Lab 7 tutorial. Namely, how to edit your landscape photos with Photo Lab 7. And in this tutorial, I will show you how to take a photo like this and turn it into something more like this. Let's begin. So the first thing we're going to do is sort of brighten this image. And there's a couple of ways we can do this. In most photo editing, I will begin with the exposure and I would switch it on and simply drag my picture into the correct amount of brightness. And as I do, you can see the image is getting brighter, but we can also see that the histogram over here is shifting from the left to the right. Overblow it, we end up clipping our highlights. Underdoing it, we end up crunching everything into the shadows. So what we're looking for is that sort of nice middle ground. But if you are using Photolab 7, we can use DxO Smart Lighting instead. So what we're going to do is click on here. And we have various different settings. So we have custom, in which case you just simply dial in the setting that you want. We have the ability just to dial in slight, medium, or strong. And there's really no sort of right answer. It's just a matter of taste. And what we're going to do is sort of draw this in until we get something that uh, our eyes like what they see. We've got two options as well here. We've got uniform, which is kind of evaluating the entire photograph for a sort of medium brightness. And we've got spot weighted. Now, what we use spot weighted for is to emphasize a particular object. This is mostly applicable to portraits where we want our person to pop beyond all else. But if I wanted to prioritize exposure for this lighthouse, I most certainly could and I most certainly will. So here, as we drag the intensity, DxO Photolab 7 makes sure it prioritizes and preserves my lighthouse. So there we go, things are looking pretty good. Typically, I would go to Tone Curves next, but instead I'm going to go to DxO Clear View Plus. I'm gonna click that on, and what we're gonna see is this image is gonna get a lot more sort of crunchier. If I dial it up to the max, you can kind of see what that looks like. Obviously, that is way too much, so we're gonna dial this back until we get to something a little bit less vulgar. Now I'm sort of liking that, but to the color tab. So one of the things I'm not keen on on this photo is the, the grass itself. It's a little bit too green. It's not quite what I want for this particular photo. But instead of sort of pulling green sliders, I'm going to go to the HSL color wheel. I'm going to click onto this eyedropper. And then I'm going to click onto the offending green item. Here, I can now adjust the saturation of the grain whilst leaving the rest of the photo intact. So I'm gonna sort of drop that about here. I can also improve the luminance. That's brightness, guys. So I can make it brighter or darker. I'm gonna leave it about there. And Uniformity, uh, what that means is if we actually look at the detail here, we can see we've got slight, slightly brown grass up here versus sort of well-watered green grass down here. What we can do is kind of flatten the difference. So if we kind of go to the left, we can kind of see the difference become more severe between the brown and the green, or we can go the other way and just flatten the difference entirely. I'm gonna kind of mostly flatten, but I'm gonna leave just a little bit there for the sake of texture. So let's have a look, how far have we come? We're gonna just go up to here, we're gonna click compare. No corrections, no geometry, that's where we started. And this is where we are now. However, we are not quite finished yet. We are going to go to local masking. So we're not gonna do a whole lot of masking in this particular video. What I'm gonna do is just a simple sort of linear graduated filter. This is kind of like the ND grads we used to stick on front of our lens and some still do, but I find it much easier just to sort of draw one on in post. Now that's there, we can sort of show the mask. Now, if you're new to masks, this hasn't just painted blue over our image. This is just here for illustrative purposes. 
what it's going to do is localize any adjustment we make to this masked area so as i drag the exposure down it's going to affect the sky and only the sky the rest of the photo remains intact so i'm going to go for something a little bit moody so i've just adjusted the exposure i can also sort of adjust the shadows midtones black i might boost up the midtones a little bit drop the shadows again don't do precisely what i'm doing it just depends on the photo and i might try a bit of clear view plus i want to see what that looks like and contrast why not Now, looking at this image, I feel like the whole thing could be just a little bit brighter. So after all of that, I'm just going to shift it up a bit. Just a little bit. And I think there is our finished image. And once again, let's go back to the original. So we go to no corrections. Original image versus processed image. And that's about it. So if you would like to try Photo Lab 7 for free, you can. And there's a link in the description for your new 30-day trial. No credit card is required. I hope you found that useful. My name's Richard from Silent Peak, and I wish you a good day. Bye-bye.